Hi, I'm Amanda Sorensen. Um, I'm presenting modeling and mobile interface capability using crowdsourcing and deep learning. Um, I worked on this with Yang Li at Google. Tapping is one of the most important gestures on a mobile phone, um, but in many apps, sometimes people can't tell which elements are tappable. Um, and this can be a huge usability issue. Interface designers can use signifiers to let users know an interface element is tappable, like the blue color of a link, the shape of a button, the location of an element on the screen, or they can use a combination of different visual properties. If a designer uses the wrong signifier, it can result in poor usability. If there's no signifier to tap on something, the user can miss out on a potentially useful feature. And if a designer uses a false signifier, users may tap on elements and get no response, um, which can lead to frustration and poor usability. One thing a designer can do to understand if people will know which elements are tappable is to conduct a tappability study where they would have people label interface elements they think are tappable and not tappable. Um, and they can do this using crowdsourcing. Or sometimes they even do this by just printing out their interfaces on a sheet of paper and having people uh, label the tappable elements. The challenges of this is that for designers is that they have to run this study on every new visual design change, um, which can be expensive, and conducting the lab study can be time consuming. Additionally, for the design and research community, um, we are only conducting these studies on a small scale or on a single interface or set of interfaces, so we don't really have a good consistent understanding of which sig signifiers are having an impact across all interfaces. So in order to create an automated approach, we need a diverse set of tappability, tappability data across uh, lots of di different interfaces. So we collected this data across a large corpus uh, of mobile app screens, um, and we had people label tappable and not tappable elements. From there, we analyzed a set of signifiers um, to understand their prevalence in the data set. And we curated these from some informal design principles for signifying tappability. We use these signifiers to build a deep learning model to predict the tappability of interface elements. And finally, we built the TapShoe interface that can analyze an existing app to help an app designer or developer discover mismatches between the model's prediction and the tappable state of interface elements in code. So first, I'll go over how we collected a large data set of tappability labels. We built an interface to let people label um, tappable and not tappable elements, um, and we had people label 3,400 randomly selected screens from the RICO data set, which was released a few years ago for data-driven design applications. We recruited 743 um, different workers through Amazon Mechanical Turk, and they labeled over 20,000 interface elements. We got these elements they labeled from the Android view hierarchies in the data set, which contains the structure and interface elements. Um, and they also contain an interface property which defines whether an element is actually tappable or not in the um, application source code. So overall, we collected over 14,000 labels of tappable elements and close to 6,000 not tappable elements. And when comparing the worker labels to the ground truth, which is the actual state in code, the workers did not do very well. Um, they only labeled 90% of tappable elements correctly and only 61% of the not tappable elements. So what this is telling us is that there is a significant usability problem to be solved and that people have a lot of misperceptions of tappability. So next I'll describe a set of signifiers we analyzed, such as type, color, and words, to learn more about what signifiers the workers use to distinguish tappable and not tappable elements. So um, one signifier we analyzed was the element's location on the screen. So we made this heat map of the worker accuracy by the location using the bounding boxes of the elements and accuracy against the ground truth for all of the tappable and not tappable interface elements. Um, the red here means the high accuracy and the blue means low accuracy in that area. And from this heat map, we can see that the location of an element affects the accuracy of the labels. The workers are more precise in labeling tappable elements at the bottom center and in the top quarters. So they think that elements in these locations are um, tappable. And this happens to be where many apps place a button or a back button to navigate so placing a not tappable element here may lead to mistakes. Um, for the not tappable case, uh, the workers were more precise in the middle center of the screen, and that happens to be where a lot of apps place a logo or something that's not tappable. Um, and so placing something here um, can also lead to um, misperceptions. 
Based on learned conventions, people also have come to understand certain types of elements to be tappable, like a checkbox or a radio button. So um, this chart shows the distribution of element types across um, tappable and not tappable elements, as well as the proportion of correct labels within that type. So for tappable elements, most types had a high proportion of correct labels. Um, but common tappable and common tappable elements like buttons and checkboxes were labeled most correctly, um, which confirms kind of our intuitions about this. So for not tappable elements, um, we found the most common types were text view and image view, which are two element types that allow for more flexibility in design. Um, and that may, maybe uh, potentially unconventional styles uh, make, make, may make an element more prone to ambiguity in tappability. Also, informal design recommendations recommend to use color, such as blue or bright colors, to signify tappable elements. So we clustered the pixel colors of the full group of tappable and not tappable elements, and we found that the brighter colors were more common in the tappable elements, and the grays and the whites were more common in not tappable elements. So it's another clue that the designers are following these recommendations. Um, Additionally, design recommendations say to label interactive elements with short, actionable phrases. We found that not tappable elements had 1.84 more words um, per element on average, which shows us to the extent to which designers are following, following these guidelines and using not tappable elements to display longer informational phrases. The guidelines also say to use actionable keywords. So we analyzed the top five keywords for tappable and not tappable elements using a TF, uh, TF IDF analysis, which is a way of extracting um, key words. Um, for tappable elements, we found that submit and close were the top keywords, but overall the remaining keywords um, didn't seem significant to us. And additionally, for not tappable elements, we didn't find any interesting keywords there. Um, so next I'll describe how we use these signifiers um, to build a deep learning model to predict interface element tappability. Based on the signifiers we found, we built a convolutional neural network model um, which processes visual features in a semantic uh, embedding to model element types and word content. Um, and we extracted these features from the view hierarchy metadata from the data set and screenshot data um, that we had. And the features include the elements bounding box on the screen, um, which includes the location and the size, this element's semantic type, such as button or text view, um, the words an element contains and the number of words. And also we have uh, the screenshot data. So that includes the screenshot of the pixels of the element itself and the screen on which the element is from to include uh, contextual information around the element that might be signifying tappability. Um, and then our model uh, produces the output prediction um, and a continuous probability of uh, the interface element being tappable. So how well can we predict tappability? Well, um, we predicted tappability with a precision of 90.2 and recall of 87 for tappable elements. And for not tappable, um, around 70 and 78. So while we tried to sample equal numbers of actually tappable and not tappable elements, the orig original data set was unbalanced. So we had around 14,000 tappable and 6,000 not tappable elements. So we created a balanced data set where we upsampled the, um, the not tappable elements and um, this did lead to a drop in the precision and recall for the tappable elements, but it also greatly improved the accuracy for the not tappable elements. Um, so these accuracy numbers are pretty good. They wanted to figure out how we could do better. So one possibility would, would be that we could ten continue improving our model, we could add more features to give it more predictive capability. But since people have used many different types of interfaces, human perception of tappability might not be highly consistent. Um, so we wanted to understand um, more about that because potentially achieving a perfect model um, might be really difficult because of um, inconsistency. So we conducted an additional analysis to understand how consistent people's tappability annotations work. We had 290 uh, workers labeling 2,000 unique interface elements um, across 334 different screenshots, and each element was labeled five times. Um, and what we found was that while there was some agreement, um, only 58% of the elements were labeled the same among all five workers. Uh, and we computed some different um, statistics on this. One was an agreement score, 
which is the commonly used in gesture guessability studies, and that resulted in 0.834. And we also computed another metric, which is the Fleiss's kappa, a standard measure of inter-rater inter reliability, and that was 0 0.520, which indicates a mod moderate level of agreement. So this means that tappability perception is variable and somewhat inconsistent, um, and that means that future modeling approaches may need to find a way to address these inconsistencies in order to um, improve their accuracy. Um, and we also ran our model's prediction on the data set that we collected for consistency. Um, and what we can see from this scatter plot is that our model matches the uncertainty in human perception pretty well. So when all the workers agree that an element is tappable um, in the top right corner um, on the far right, um, this, the model gives a more definitive prediction. And this also happens for the not tappable elements. So you can see that it's darker areas. Um, and that's where the model is more sure, um, and that's when the workers agree on those predictions. So, um, so now that we have this model to predict tappability for interface elements, uh, I want to describe how we built the model into a tool to help designers uncover tappability and per misperceptions in their own interfaces. So uh, we made this interface called TapShoe, which is based, um, which uses the model to, for designers to analyze their own apps. And they can drag and drop their apps into the interface and view the predictions of the model. And it also compares the model's predictions to the actual um, tappable state of an element from the um, Android uh, view hierarchies. Um, and we conducted some interviews with seven um, professional designers. And we demonstrated them Tapshu in our model. And we asked them to think about how they could see Tapshu fitting into their design process and how they could envision using the model um, predictions beyond the TAPSHU interface. Through these interviews, we uncovered uh, several potential uses for this model. For the TAPSHU interface specifically, the designers responded positively to the tool and the model, um, but they thought that the TAPSHU interface could be helpful if it could also provide a recommendation for how to fix the uh, human misperception beyond just having the prediction. They also re uh, requested having a spatial visual visualization of the tappability across the entire screen. So I could analyze the whole screen and see the, um, how tappability uh, is across the whole interface to gain a holistic understanding. Um, and they also thought the model's predictions could be really useful to systematically compare small variations in signifiers to see that, how they're affecting the model's predictions. Um, and this could help them potentially even discover new signifiers that, have, that are coming about. Um, and they also thought it would be useful to train on existing data sets or uh, different platforms, such, such as running this uh, model on early stage mockups, like sketch documents. Um, and this might be a better time for them to analyze um, this, uh, uh, these properties because that's before they've actually implemented it, so it's easier to make the changes. Um, so, to conclude, we found that people um, had low accuracy currently in distinguishing tappable from not tappable elements. Um, but we can build models that use visual, spatial, and semantic features to predict human tappability perception. And our model performs pretty well, given the amount of inconsistency in people's um, perceptions. And we can use this uh, model to help designers better understand a very important aspect of the usability of their interfaces. Thank you. Yeah, uh, so thanks a lot, and um, if you have questions, just raise your hand, and we have a mic. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, really fantastic talk, um, and an absolutely great tool. Uh, I really look forward to uh, hopefully having the chance to use it, uh, which is my first question, uh, how do I get access to this? Uh, so we don't currently have a, a version like um, out yet. Um, we're still working on some like new research related to it, but um, we will. I can let you know if you want information on that later. I'm sure it will come out. Have yeah. a blog post or something on it. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. And then uh, uh, second question. Um, I know that I noticed uh, for the colors of tappable versus not tappable elements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, 
there look like quite a lot of uh, white and gray on on both of the the yeah. charts, and I mm -hmm. wonder. Um, I wonder if you took into consideration background colors because I know a lot of uh, a big trend is to use a, a white background and then colored elements for that are tappable. But I also see a lot of apps where the mm -hmm. entire background color of the screen is blue, and then you get that little, you know, uh, uh, click here kind of a yeah, sure. in white text or some other color that. Uh, yeah, actually, for the the um, pixel colors that we clustered there, um, that was just the bounding. Like we clipped out the pixels of that element itself, so it wouldn't involve it wouldn't include much of the background color. Um, so those should be just the colors that are like related to the elements or, or that are from the elements themselves. But the background color could also have like some, um, also maybe add some information to the user. So. We, our model itself had, uh, takes in the screenshot um, uh, w as well as part of the, making the prediction. So like it can capture the contextual um, factors around. And we, when we actually took that out and tested it, we saw that it, there was like a two or three percent drop in the accuracy. So there's a lot of information coming from um, outside the element itself that, as well. Okay, thanks very much. So are there more questions? Yeah, thank you for the talk. I was just wondering, uh, you, uh, how do you do your survey? You do it online, a website online, and then people click there to, to make sure, yeah? But you, uh, pre, pre, uh, you want to predict people use mobile phone. So I think the, the, the way they click and the way they use their terms to, to get maybe different. So how do you predict it? Yeah, so um, our like our interface for labeling is kind of a proxy because they're just they're um, basically labeling these screens on their um, on a web page because they're doing it through Mechanical Turk, so it's not like exactly the same exact situation. So maybe you, that's that's just kind of a limitation of this of this process is that the workers are not actually using their phones. Um, so there may be some way that in the future we could um, collect the data like automatically while people are, while people are using their phones and interacting with different things as well. Um, we've been thinking about that a little bit. Um, okay, thank you. I have yeah. another question. Uh, you you use the words by workers they are doing this, and so uh, is it different from uh, the normal users or the workers? Can they put, yeah? Um, yeah, so they're just uh, workers on Mechanical Turk, so hopefully they should represent a, a subset of people that um, use mobile phones, because a lot of, I mean, all of them use mobile phones um, as well, so, um, and I think we actually had, like, that as, like, a filter for people who have to, you have to actually use a mobile phone, but I think most people, a lot of people do these days, so. Um, Thank you. Yeah, Thank so, you very much. Yeah. I'm impressed. Thank you. Yeah. Are there, are there more questions? Hi, Yi Hao from National Taiwan University. Uh, really interesting work. So I'm wondering if you consider some future works on uh, working on other gestures like uh, besides tab, like uh, if the UI is swipeable or pinchable or rotatable. Yeah, thanks. Hmm. Yeah, and none of those particular things. We're um, looking to some other like things that are kind of about human perception. But um, yeah, there could be like potentially other gestures, maybe that um, trying to figure out if those are um, discoverable. Swipeable one would require a whole new um, uh, approach because that's not like a visual thing. It's just in the in the in the UI. So we'd have to think of some way to capture that data. But that's a really interesting uh, direction. Okay, uh, so let's thank Amanda again.